so what we're doing today is making the head of the hammer um, and to do that I've got my piece of stock in there at the moment it's actually already 30 millimeters in diameter um, so I'm actually just gonna leave it how it is on the external um, I need to face it down the right size actually I might I might run those off and just go down a millimeter um, and then drill our holes through it and then um, thread those so we're gonna get onto that now by finishing facing this down to that line because I know that's going to be the appropriate 50 millimeters in length. happy with that. I do want to leave it actually slightly bigger, um, just for no other reason than I, I want to keep it a little bit longer um, for my end product. So now what we're going to do is take off a millimetre from each side and then we should be good to go um, as well. I'm just going to take my carbide bit out of the way so I don't damage it when I loosen this up. I'm just going to bring that out just a touch. Now what we're gonna do, I'm actually, I'm, it's about 50 mils long. I think it'd look a bit silly if I did it any more than that. On the drawing, it doesn't actually say. Pretty sure we went to 10 millimeters last time. So what I'm gonna do is the same process to both sides. I'm gonna bring this up to it, touch the edge of my metal so it leaves a scratch. I know that's now zeroed. I can then, looking at this here, Turn it in one millimeter, okay? Turn it. It's riding you on yourself. The storm is coming. Wow, kid. What you gonna do now? It's your reflection looking back to pull you down. So are you gonna die today? Okay, now just to make sure, ease of actually seeing where I've marked. Just gonna make my mark way more visible there like that. And for those who didn't realize, when I, I, did, I was able to do that then straight away without marking it out like I did the first time, because I didn't move my cross slide, so I had it the same depth as I had the other side, and I knew that, so that's why it was quite easy to do that. So now what I'm gonna do is, leaving that in there, I'm gonna take my carbide bit out, and then using my center drill piece, gonna center drill this.
Okay, so I've successfully centre drilled that out. So now I'm my, my drill bit's not going to go um, and wobble when it touches the surface. One thing I haven't actually done is grab some coolant. I'm going to need coolant if I'm going to be drilling this larger diameter hole. Although in reality you should be using it for most diameters just to make sure it's easier on the tools that you have. Okay, now I just used the center drilling piece, so I've got it set on 1400. I do need to take that down if I'm going to be drilling a larger hole. And I'm going to take that down to 360. This spray bottle is not doing very good. Fuller one. Alright, this one's working fine. should have drilled one hole before that um, and I wouldn't have struggled so much to actually get that a pass through um, <coughs> you can see there that the end of the drill bit did get quite hot um, but it's about trying to minimize that and that's why I went the lowest speed I went to 360 um, if you worked it out using uh, um, the RPM calculations up there um, you'd notice that it actually is quite you need to be quite a lot quicker than 360 when you're doing that and it just burns out the drill bits too much. Okay, so there we have it. Now what I might actually do, um, I was going to go back over that but I actually don't mind how that's turned out. I do realise it's got a little bit of ribbing um, around there from the lathe um, but then I might actually leave that because it's going to be a working hammer anyway. So now we need to put this over here and get to putting a thread on it. We're using a 14 by 2 make sure we have Trefilex and a tap wrench. So I know I've covered this in previous videos, but you can see here um, how we've got different degrees of angle down the bottom, and that's how you know you've got your starting, sorry, your starting tap, your secondary tap, and your plug tap. Um, so yeah, making sure you use them in that order, so that way you get a really good finish, um, and don't put too much stress on the taps that you are using. Okay, this stuff's good. It actually just helps it cut um, the metal, keeps it lubricated through the process. To the world, no heroes and villains. Welcome to the war. We've only begun. So pick up your weapon and face it. There's blood on the ground going to.
Always careful, being careful when you're taking your tap out as well. Obviously, don't cut your fingers on the um, cutting bits there, but yeah, just make sure it doesn't fall out because when these fall on the ground, they are hard and steel and they, they could actually crack or um, rupture in some kind of way. So, being careful not to do that. So, there we go. So, we've got our hammerhead now, and the easiest way to test if our thread's good. Um, is actually to get our hammer handle that we made previously and just make sure that it'll fit nicely and you can see there that's actually a really nice fit I don't actually have to turn that very much at all I can use two fingers to tighten it in um, and because we put it all the way through I always do like to check both sides um, of the hammer head so you can see there that actually that side was even better than the other side so that's really good. So next time what we're going to be doing um, is doing our hole into our side of our hammerhead so that way we can um, start putting this together and then making our caps for it. So it's going to be looking a lot more like that and then make our nylon and aluminium caps.